Good evening, I'm Chris Wallace in for Brett Baer. There are tweets and clarifications, reports and denials tonight in the investigation into President Trump's alleged links with Russia and possible obstruction of justice. All this while Mr. Trump announced a major policy change reversing the course set by his predecessor. Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts starts us off tonight. Good evening, John. Chris, good evening to you. The president returned uh, home to the White House a short time ago after a brief trip to Miami, a friendly audience, to make good on a campaign pledge to get a better deal from Cuba. Effective immediately, I am canceling the last administration's completely one-sided deal with Cuba. Before a jubilant crowd with a stroke of his executive pen, President Trump moved to tighten the screws on the Castro regime, rolling back Obama-era easements on Cuba policy. We challenge Cuba to come to the table with a new agreement that is in the best interests of both their people and our people, and also of Cuban Americans. The new policy reinstates the tourism ban on Cuba, maintains the embargo, and prohibits Americans from doing business with Cuban military and government-owned businesses. While the president says he is canceling the Obama-era deal, he stopped short of full repeal, announcing some provisions on exports, immigration, and diplomacy will stay in place. Our embassy remains open in the hope that our countries can forge a much stronger and better path. In his public appearances and statements, President Trump has stayed on message with his agenda. But he is still using the Twitterverse as a rhetorical weapon against his detractors. The president tweeting this morning, quote, I am being investigated for firing the FBI director by the man who told me to fire the FBI director. Witch hunt. The president's legal team insists he was not acknowledging that he is under investigation, merely referring to the reporting that's out there. But a source tells Fox News the tweet was squarely aimed at Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general who appointed special counsel Robert Mueller. Rosenstein also wrote the three-page letter laying out the reasons James Comey should be removed as FBI director. The tweet raised questions as to whether Rosenstein's job might be on the line, an issue that came up in an appropriations subcommittee hearing earlier this week. Could you be terminated without cause? Yes. Who would appoint your replacement as your position now, Deputy Attorney General? The President. So that's a possibility. Yeah, anything's possible, Senator. Reports also began swirling that Rosenstein may now be a target of the Mueller investigation for his part in Comey's firing, and that he may have to recuse himself. In a statement, Justice Department spokesman Ian Pryor told Fox News, quote, as the Deputy Attorney General has said numerous times, if there comes a point when he needs to recuse, he will. However, nothing has changed. As leaks about the Mueller investigation grew last night, including one that Jared Kushner's business dealings are now under scrutiny, Rosenstein issued a rather strange, out-of-the-blue statement about leaks, saying, quote, Americans should exercise caution before accepting as true any stories attributed to anonymous officials. Americans should be skeptical about anonymous allegations. Sources close to Jared Kushner shot down the idea that his business dealings with Russia were under investigation, saying, quote, we do not know what this report refers to. They also reiterated that they have been contacted neither by the FBI nor the Office of Special Counsel. Chris? John Roberts reporting from the White House. John, thanks for that.